Hello everybody. You're very welcome here to the Grad Ireland um, talk stage for the first seminar of today. Um, today's topic is going to be navigate a beginner's guide to navigating life after college um, with John Slattery here. Um, we will be able to take a few questions at the very end if you want. Um, there's, an, there's a website called slido.com. If you go to it and enter code 3684, you can send through some questions and if we have time at the end, I'll put some of them to John. And yeah, that's it. I'll let John take it away here. Thank you very much, Noel. So, so that's slido.com 3684. Yeah. 3684. So if anyone wants to ask a question as we go through, you can do so through that. So slido.com 3684. Um, I might just stand up if that's okay. It's lovely to be here to talk to you about a beginner's guide to life after college. I have to admit, if I was in DCU accounting and finance in my final year as I was, I would have loved to have got a talk like this because I went into a training, graduate training contract in PwC knowing so little about the professional world. So talks like this, I believe, are very helpful. So a huge thank you to Niall and to Grad Ireland for allowing me to do so. Uh, before we get into what I would like to talk to you today about, which is ultimately focus and how important that is for you as you transition from college to work, connection, how important connection is in your professional career and what you can do now to get ahead with regards to connecting with people. And lastly, the wonderful skill that is positivity and a simple tip for you to start strengthening the muscle of positivity now to serve you all the way through your career as you transition from college. So before I get into that, sometimes for me it can be nice to know a little bit about the person that's speaking to you. So I just like to share a little bit about myself. So I grew up in a mix of Cork and Wicklow. For some of you who know both accents, you'll probably guess which, which accent I've held on to. Um, I'm going to now move forward to the age of 30. So I'm a senior manager in the professional services firm PwC. I have a mortgage on a house in West Cork. I'm in a relationship. It's all feeling very serious, and yet it doesn't quite feel like it's me. So I did what I'd recommend anyone to do in that scenario when they need to find a few answers. I packed a bag and headed off to South America for three months. And I was full sure I was going to get all the answers to all of life's questions in my three months down in South America. I got no answers to all of life's questions, but I had the best crack ever, and I'd recommend anyone to do it. When I came back, I continued to be curious about what is the true me, and it ultimately ended up in me setting up my business inspo in 2016 and living the, leaving the paid world. And it's the closest thing I've got to saying that I love what I do. And why do I say I love what I do? Because from the age of seven, I used to spend hours out in my back garden with a football. I have three wonderful sisters. I had no brothers, so sport became my brother. So I'd be out in the back... Actually, I'm just going to pause. The people at the back row, can you just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay? Lovely. Uh, so I would spend hours out in my backyard with my football. Now if my sisters and my mum and dad looked out, they might just see a fella kicking a ball around. But it was totally different for me. Because I was imagining teammates next to me and I was trying to communicate to motivate with them. There was trees that separated our house and the neighbour's house. I didn't see them as trees. I saw them as thousands of fans in the stadium. And I was trying to motivate the fans to get behind me and my imaginary team. Now I'd come in after being in the back garden for three hours buzzing, sitting down for dinner and they'd be like, what is going on with your man? I'd be buzzing. And for me, 33 years on, this gives me the exact same kick as I got out in my back garden. The only difference is you are real. I don't have to imagine you. Uh, and maybe the topics just are a little bit more grown up than I had back then as an eight-year-old. So loving what I do, why do I believe this is important? Because if you can get ahead in your career early, and if you can create habits in your career early, they will stand to you so, so well. So hopefully today we maybe might sow the seeds and how you can create quick wins for yourself. What's my hope for this session? Well, Lyle, I'm going to keep it very simple and go easy on myself. I hope one of you gets value from this session. Right? If just one of you gets value, I'll go off on my bike home with a smile on my face. Right? I'm just going to go easy on myself today. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you for a moment firstly 
actually, before I talk about focus, I'd like firstly just to mention briefly my first experience on a ski slope, which was in the age of around 25, 26. I'd never skied before. I am not comfortable when my feet aren't on solid ground. So just to let you know. So I found skiing quite tricky being on these two skis. So it was quite awkward experience for me for the week and a lot of fear. And then I went with my aunt and uncle and they had an eight-year-old daughter. And I remember one time we were sitting at lunch on the side of the ski slope and she literally came careering down the slope towards the, um, where we were having lunch. Now there was a big drop, or a 10 foot drop, and I'm looking at my niece, thinking if she doesn't slow down, she is literally gonna go over our heads in through to the, to the area where people were sitting, and it wouldn't be pretty. Last minute, she does this elegant little turn, stops, smiles, and goes, how's everyone? And I'm trying to pick my heart up off the floor as some of the other adults were. So why do I tell you that story? From a very young age, my niece started skiing, and very early on in life, it became second nature to her. She didn't have to think about being on the slopes. She didn't have to think about this turn at speed. And if you can do that in life, with different skills, where they become second nature, they stand to you so well. And that's what I'd like to talk to you about, focus, positivity, and connection. So focus. On a scale of one to 10, as a former accountant, I love bringing numbers into a session. On a scale of one to 10, how good would you rate your focus? So I might just call out the numbers of between one to 10. So if you say one, you might, if you're comfortable, raise your hand. If it's nine, if you're comfortable, you might raise your hand, just to get a sense in the room. And if you don't fancy raising your hand today, you just keep it down, it's all good. So I'm gonna count the numbers. If you're up for it, you might raise your hand. So one. Two, three, four, appreciate the honesty, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, Noel, I don't know where you and me would be. I'd say I'm around a seven, six. Even. Yeah, six or five. Seven, sorry, I'm putting you on the spot there, apologies. <laughs> uh, so there's a mix in the room. So here's what I'm going to share you. A couple of stats on focused, maybe that might help you. So energy experts such as um, Tony Schwartz and Jim Lohr will say to us that after around 90 minutes to 120 minutes, we move from high performance to plateauing to very quickly starting to decrease in our ability to perform. So if you're studying for ex an exam beyond 90 minutes in one sitting, what they would say is you'll start to lose concentration. By 120 minutes, your mind is elsewhere altogether, which reminds me of my experience in my second last accountancy exams at home in Wicklow Town, where my mind would be out the back garden so often. Quite often I was sitting at the desk for too long. So here's one simple piece of advice that you, maybe you're already doing it. Try and cap the amount of time you sit at any one point in time, whether you're working in your graduate program or, or studying for an exam, to no more than 90 minutes. And after 90 minutes you get up and you take a break. Okay, now that might be common sense, but sometimes it's about making common sense, common practice. Second thing, coming from the, uh, a piece of work by a psychologist called Mark Waldman, he would say that in that 90 minutes, to keep our concentration and our focus as high as it can be, we should take micro breaks every 20 to 25 minutes. So no more than 20 to 25 minutes, we stand up for a minute, we get a cup of tea, we just step away from the desk for maybe two minutes, get some fresh air. But those micro breaks allow our focus to stay at a high level for that 90 minutes that you're sitting down. So if I was to say one thing in life after college as you start your, your training programs, wherever they may, try and cap your time to 90 minutes and take 20, after 20 minutes, take a micro break, and that will allow your focus to be as high as possible. The benefits of this, if you are motivated for career success, you want to retire by your 40, etc., etc. this will allow you to be very productive in your day. If you're not that motivated by career success at all, you say, John, to be honest, I just want to be out of work at half five. I want to play my rugby or play my, you know, my musical instrument or my other hobbies, have the crack. This will allow you to get your work done in the most smartest way and allow you to close down the laptop at the earliest available opportunity. So it wins on both levels. So that's focus. 
The second is, as I focus my mind on the time I have available, is connection. To this point in time where you are in life today, how important have people been in helping you, supporting you to get here in everything you've achieved? We'll go from one to 10 again. Former accountants just love a number, can't say no to a number exercise. So 10, if it's really important, zero is it, John, I have trodden my own path. I am an island, uh, thank you very much. There's no right, there's no wrong. It's just your life experience. So I'm gonna go for one, two, I'm gonna stop doing that with my fingers because I'm gonna lose count. Three, four, appreciating the honesty, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So for me, in my 41 years of living, in my 20 years or so post-college, I would say that people have been the single most important thing in all that I've achieved in life. In a study of buyers of professional services, the number one reason that they chose any firm over another is the people in the firm. Carol Pemberton, a resilience expert, says that one of the four biggest things that allows us to be resilient is people in our lives, reaching out, talking to them, looking for advice, having fun with them. So whether it's resilience or again, whether it's succeeding in our career, people will be so important to you. So here's a thought. Quite often we can break down people in our lives into three different categories. First is personal. So that's our friends, our family, our college buddies, people from our sports and social interests, etc. The second, and this will grow for you as you go on, is operational. People who help you do your day job when you start your career. And the third is people who are strategically important to the ambitions you have. And that might be a college mentor, uh, a lecturer, someone like for me, an uncle who has a path in business that I'm interested in. So we have personal, operational, helping her do our day job and strategic. So here's a simple idea we for you. We're reminding you all that our seminars are now live because our seminar rooms and grand island talk stage. There's no way I could compete with that voice at all. <laughs> um, so here's a simple idea. Once a month, just once a month, my suggestion to you is you meet with someone from one of those three categories of the people in your life. So for the month of October, you might meet with one person from your personal network. Now you might say, well, I'm just meeting up with my buddies for drinks in the middle of October, so that's that done. So I'm gonna challenge you a little bit. It's a one-to-one -one meeting. So it's meeting someone for a coffee or a drink, but it's just one person because that's when you can really get to know how they're getting on. And that's all I invite you to do. Ask them how they're doing, stay in touch. In November, if you're starting work, invite you to meet one person from your operational network. And if you haven't started your work yet, maybe someone from college, like a lecturer, just one person in November from that part of your network and meet them one to one. And lastly, in December, saving the most important, perhaps the last, someone from your strategic, who's strategically important to you, who can help you with your goals. It might be your mentor. It might be an aunt or an uncle who you really admire what they do in life. And just meet them one person for a coffee or for something. So that's something, and what we're doing is we're building the habit of staying in touch. And those important people stay in our lives, and that's connection. And the last but not least, is positivity. Show of hands, who has seen the movie Inside Out? Okay, a mixed crew. I'd always sometimes feel embarrassed about saying that I've seen Inside Out, but no. thank God, and I shouldn't be, Noel, thank you. For, uh, <laughs> but I, I always, I have, I have wonderful nieces and a nephew, so sometimes I can just say, oh, I saw that with my nieces and nephew, when typically I saw it on my own. Um, it's a wonderful movie, and I think often, Kids' movies, in inverted commas, have wonderful lessons for us as adults. So here's a challenge for those who had your hands up. Can anyone remember the five main characters that operate the mind of the 12-year-old called Riley, who is the main, ca main character? There is five different characters who control Riley's mind. Can anyone tell me what they are? I'll keep an eye, I'm a good lip reader. Joy, thank you, there's one. Anyone else? Sadness, thank you, that's two. I heard anger, that's three, two to go. Disgust is four. 
And if you're standing in front of 50 people, you might have a certain level of fear is the fifth. Does anyone know what those five things represent? The five primary emotions that you and I experience every day. Joy, anger, fear, disgust, sadness. Inside out, creating a beautiful way of giving one of the most important messages to kids and adults. What do you notice about those? The only one that didn't make the cut for the movie was surprise, confusion. Um, clearly, its acting skills aren't what it needs to be. What do you notice about those five different things? Joy, anger, fear, sadness, and disgust. Particularly if you think of the words positive and negative. Four out of the five of them are negative. And yet they're, they're the primary emotions that we experience every day. Now the reason, there's a reason for that. The earliest versions of you, the earliest ancestors, their main goal was survival, to survive. So these helped them to stay alive and stay safe. Fear, what's that rustling in the bush? There's fear, I'm now alert. Disgust, I spent three hours in a river trying to catch a fish with a spear and I still haven't caught anything and I need to. So I feel disgusted because I have to get it to stay alive. So they were all the emotions they experienced to stay alive and we've just evolved. But here's the thing, there can be a negativity bias for us as human beings because of the fact that we experience these emotions. So there's a beautiful opportunity for you as you begin life after college, in my opinion. And it's to strengthen the muscle of positivity, to strengthen the muscle of joy, because it's out there on its own, one out of five. So how do we do that? I'm gonna give you one simple exercise that I believe if you start now, it can help you so much in your career and in life. And it's called gratitude. Gratitude is a form of joy. So does anyone go to the gym, I wonder? Show of hands who is, if anyone, uh, yes, thank you for the honesty. I'm sure there's more than one, thank you very much. There's, thank you, yes, I love that. There's a leader and a followers, I appreciate it. So, when we go to the gym, we, we do muscle rep, uh, weight repetitions and it strengthens our muscles. And the muscles grow, they're stronger, they grow bigger. We can do the same with positivity. Just like we do reps in the gym, we can do reps of positivity every day and strengthen that muscle. So that in work, when there's a, a scenario which could be both positive and negative, we see the positive as much as we see the negative. How do we do this? Gratitude. Practice daily gratitude, we're doing daily reps of positivity. We're strengthening the muscle of positivity. So before I hand over to Niall in a moment to see if there's any questions, and hoping and inviting you to use Slido and 3684, I believe. We have making the most yep. out of your first year of your graduate career, starting shortly in seminar room two. As a last exercise before we open the floor to questions, I'd love you to think about one thing. Right now, in your life, What's one thing you are grateful for? You won't have to share. If it's there, brilliant. If it's not there, that's okay. How does that recollection of that gratitude make you feel right now? So for me, I immediately thought... Starting shortly at CV seminars, we have focusing on the future, learning how to strengthen your skills, experience, and CV. In presentations, you should often pause. Sometimes it's very helpful when someone speaks over you because it forces <laughs> you to pause. Um, I thought of my nieces. Very grateful to have them. They are such good crack. They, they force me to dance when I'm dying to dance, but secretly don't want to do it in front of fellow adults. Um, and they're just, they live life very well. And when I think of them, it makes me feel warm in my heart. So that was just one rep. That was just one rep of gratitude, one rep of positivity. I encourage you to do that every day. Just once, just once, every day. That'll be 365 reps every year throughout the start of your career that will strengthen the muscle of positivity. Thank you so much for coming here and choosing to sit with me and Noel for this time. Thank you to anyone who has got a question already to Noel, or indeed up from the floor. I'm going to now sit down for a moment and see do we have any questions or maybe Noel and me might just have a chat.
That's great. John, thanks a million. Um, fantastic. I know myself with some tips to take away that I'll um, hopefully put into practice. Um, one question here. It was about you know reaching out to people in your network. What w- what would be your advice for someone that's perhaps an introvert, maybe is not comfortable, you know, is nervous to reach out to someone maybe more senior than them? I hear you. I I think firstly the first thing I'd say is is creating a positive intention for the reason for reaching out. So if it's someone from your strategic network, typically it can be that you are looking for advice you're looking for help, you're looking for a perspective, I'd just be, I'd encourage you to be very honest and say to that person, I'm looking for advice. I'd love to sit down with you, to be honest. I would love to learn from your experience. If someone said that to you with sincerity, with sincerity, show of hands who'd be open to meeting them for a coffee. Sincerity now in their voice. So over half. So therefore, that means that you'll have over 50% chance, probably I think there was around 60% of hands up, 60% chance if you were a representation of that person meeting you for a coffee. Um, so I would always just go with a sincere intention, or for someone from your personal network, just go, I'd love to meet up to hear how things are going, if that's the truth. Because if it's the truth, you may as well just share it. If it's not the truth, then I, I wonder how much reason there is for meeting them to be honest. Um, So pick the people who you'd love to meet is the second thing. So be honest, pick the people who you'd love to meet and usually your sincerity should shine through and I I think that 60-70% will be the amount of times they'll say yes, if not higher. Very good. Um, The second question is around focus um, and working from home, you know, people that, I know myself, I struggle to focus with my job sometimes or to get a task done. What is the main what would be your main piece of advice for that? You know, what's, what's the one thing people can do to improve how they focus in their job and, and in other areas? Yeah, gotcha. Thank you, Niall. I, I, I will come back to the basics of just setting, setting time, setting 90 minutes, using the 20 minute slots. But if there was one additional tip, and I'll try and keep it simple, in behavioral psychology, they say the most effective way to get a good behavior or get good productivity is to reward it. So if you think back to the days when we were kids and they were told, if you clean your bedroom, you'll get, you'll get you know, a bar of chocolate or a, a, a cup of hot chocolate or I don't know, whatever the treat was that your, your parents used for you. But we're very much the same as adults. That hasn't changed. Reward tends to be an incentive for performance. So I would say if there's something you have to get done, think of something that you would love to do after or love to give yourself after. It could be a cup of hot chocolate or it could be that you'll watch them like, go to the cinema or you'll meet up with your friends. Put something at the end of it that you're looking forward to and that becomes a motivator to get it done. So outside of the focus slots and the 20 minute breaks, I would say reward can very much help get a task done now. That would be my other offering. Perfect. That's great. Um, that's all the questions, unless anybody on the floor has anything they want to, to put to John. No, no hands up. Um, no, John, thanks a million for, for your time and for, for being here today and for everybody here for attending. Um, there'll be more seminars. Our in- seminar room two, make the most out of the first year of your graduate career, is kicking off in the next few minutes. Maybe chaos is better at announcing this than me, but yeah, there's different um, seminars across this stage and other stages throughout the day, so make sure to check out um, some more of them. And thanks again, and thanks to John. Thank yeah, you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.